Agora TV. The world is thinking. HTML5 is the new programming language of the web. HTML is just a programming language, but everything in the web is built on it, and it's been totally static for a dozen years. And because it's been totally static, it's been possible for Google to commoditize everybody. Now, all of a sudden, the thing is going from Kansas to Oz. HTML5 allows you to treat a web page as a brand new canvas with no rules, no limits, no crappy flash. The problem with flash historically is that it costs more to do something differentiated there than you can charge for it. That will not be true in HTML5. I know this because I have done it myself. You can create products that blow minds for practically nothing. And the reason is because it's a blank sheet of paper and creativity rules again. So suddenly the battle is going to be between Apple's model of a little bit of differentiation with a lot of protection and the web's model of unlimited differentiation and we'll see what happens. And I'm saying that this is an environment where all of us have a chance to be market leaders. This is just starting. When my band puts out its HTML5 website in two weeks, we will put out the first media site that is pure HTML5. You can watch every one of our shows on an iPhone live. You can already do that, but you're going to be able to watch any one we ever did whenever you want as soon as the website's up. And my point to you here is I don't pay 30% to Apple. I don't pay anything to anybody. In fact, I don't even pay carriers because I have my own satellite uplink. The people who create have had to worry about middlemen on the internet from, the, from day one. That is no longer necessarily true. If you're creating a brand new thing with no brand, you're still going to need some middlemen to help you distribute. But if you're CBS News or you're the Wall Street Journal or National Geographic, you don't need anybody. You've already got a brand. You've already got customers. What you have to do is use this to change the experience. What's interesting about HTML5 is, again, because it treats the whole page as a unified thing, you can build audio, video, animation, interactivity into it. But more important, in HTML5, everything is an app in the Apple sense. So think about advertising. You don't need to have display ads anymore. If Amazon wants to advertise in HTML5, they can put an instance of the store as the ad. So if you're on the book review section of the New York Times and you see a book you like, you're going to buy it right on that page and you're not going to leave the page. So HTML5 can, if you wish, reverse the entire engagement thing. Instead of people flitting around, it becomes a control panel where you bring everything to you. So engagement at Forbes, which is typically 14 to 17 seconds on a syndicated story, may go to 14 to 17 minutes because you're going to be able to have ads not just on the page, but the, if a site theoretically, and I don't think this is technically hard, could say, we have five sponsors today. You know, would you like Ferrari to follow you around? Would you like Amazon to follow you around? Coca-Cola? You pick the brand you want to follow you around. And that will be the guy who advertises it to you. The number of new products that this will create for people who sell advertising is staggering. And the very nature that you can create and satisfy demand in the same place is something that's only true in infomercials today. And it will be true on the web. So for those of you who sell ads on television, this is actually a threat to your television business, but not until after you've had a whole bunch of years to build an entirely new business. What I'm saying to you is the time to diversify what you're doing is this moment right now because nobody understands what's going on. You're at no disadvantage, and you guys understand both creativity and you understand consumers. This is a huge, huge opportunity.